Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Levi Shirley. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. We actually get to talk about racing tonight, which is nice. We normally it's just been camping for a long time. We talk about slow stuff most of the time. This is the opposite. <laughs> um, as always, we're socially distanced. We did it before it was mandated. I'm in Kansas City. Ross is in the Northeast. And at least this time, we have someone in the same state as me. <laughs> Heck yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm in Dodge city, Kansas, which if most people don't know is Western Kansas. Yep. Yep. Opposite end of the state. So the last time I was in Dodge, uh, I was with a group of people and I was in my land cruiser and we were supposed to be running the Arkansas river between garden and Dodge because you know, it's normally dry. Yes. Yeah. It had rained six inches like two days before we got there. So it was not dry. Ah, but yeah, it happens fun. from time to time. It does. Um, you, you know, I've grown up uh, in that Arkansas River, and uh, it's been dry my entire life. I mean, like, <laughs> we have seen water in the, the Ark- Arkansas River, like, once for about a day. Right? So what, one of the, the couples I was there with, uh, the, the wife grew up in Garden. And so... We, we, I think we camped in Scott city and then drove down to garden to get in the Arkansas and go across. And we did not make it to Dodge. (laughs) We bailed at the first, yeah, we bailed at the first point where we could get out of the water. But what year did they name it? The Arkansas river? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Because that must've been a wet year. Otherwise it just would have been. (laughs) Climate change is real, Ross. Well, yeah, it's, no, it's climate, no. it's That's climate change. And then they, they dammed it up the line, um, yeah. and, mm. and Colorado at the John Martin. Uh, and then on top of that, like, uh, uh, irrigation over the years, cause we're huge in agriculture around here. Um, mm. yep. so you have all the farmers actually, you know, sucking water out of the aquifer, um, dropping the water table as well. It has allowed, um, that uh or it's made that river go dry um uh, for the past 30 years or so so my my dad and i went to southern utah um back in october just to drive around and not be in our houses um and as we were out there like we got to have the conversation about when kansas farmers changed from the long sprinklers that were spraying water everywhere to actual drip irrigation because we were literally draining the aquifer. We were going to have no water in the entire state just because of farmers. Yeah. And drip it's, irrigation. It's a water. real thing, man. Yeah. Which we were, we, we, we found it hilarious because we were in arid Southern Utah and they weren't using drip irrigation. We're like, wait a minute, you guys don't have that much water. You'd think they'd be trying to conserve yeah. it, but random yeah, crap. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're the, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, tonight's industry news is very lame. I'm, I'm, I wrote an article about it for Hooniverse and I'm, I'm telling you right now, I don't like it. (laughs) Jeep doing Jeep things. Yeah. Well, Jeep doing Jeep things, but then, yeah. So Jeep came out with the Wrangler and the Renegade. The Islander (laughs) package. Which they've done many, many, many times before. This isn't like new, you know. I, I didn't know Islander, it was new. Countless. I didn't know it was old. Yeah, no, it's a, they had it on the JK. Uh, I don't know if it, it had been on anything before, but it was certainly on on the JK. It said it uh, had eleven year hiatus. When did they start making the JK? Oh, seven was the first year. Okay, so yeah, that's so kind of, that adds up. It is essentially a parts bin and it's, decal well, kit. Somebody who said that. Um, one of the amazing commenters on Hooniverse, when I posted that, he used to sell Jeeps and his takeaway was fantastic. And I want to make sure I give him credit. Um, so to, before you read the comment, the uh, the rundown is it gets a hood decal. Yep. It gets rock rails. Yep. Which are straight from the Rubicon. So they're already selling. They already have them. Uh, part-time four-wheel drive. Two, uh, can't talk tonight. Two-speed transfer case. And then your normal slew of, you know, pick a color of a palette and Jeep's going to make it this year and then cut it out next year and make a different version of the same color. Some, something I didn't include was it gets a 17 inch Rubicon wheels as well. Mm. And, and then the Renegade gets 19s, which 
I mean, rubber bands Why? for tires on the Renegade. The Why? Good. Uh, God. They're not meant for off road. They're there just for fun. But I'm the one so, with red toes, and they'll tell you otherwise. I'm gonna I'm gonna say his name wrong, but it's it's him. Danny Gans uh, said years ago when he sold Jeeps, he was fascinated by all the different trims that came out. And it was a couple of weeks before one of the old time sales guys came up and been like, hey, man, the special editions are literally to clear out the old wheels from the previous model years. And then he started paying attention and he was like, shit, that's what they're mm-hmm. doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they uh, it's nothing more than a branding exercise, like a, a, an exercise in selling the same thing a different way. And. I mean, to that end, they do a killer job of it because they make so many different versions of exactly the same thing with slightly different stickers from the same company and they sell every single one of them. You know, there's there's 12 different models considered of Rubicon. Did you just check that? Because I'm also going to check that. No, I already know it because (laughs) I put it in my post for Hooniverse. There are technically 14 different options on the website, but I don't count 392 and Rubicon because those are actually drivetrain adjustments. Mm-hmm. Everything else basically so, is the same running gear. Sport, Willie's Sport, Sport S, Islander, Willie's, 80th anniversary, Freedom, Sport Altitude, right-hand drive, apparently. So, oh, that's the Sahara. one I didn't count. 392 and right-hand drive um, are the ones I didn't count. Rubicon, Sahara Altitude, High Altitude, 392. And then, you know, two-door or four-door in most of them. It's ridiculous. It's just I think Islander's silly. only four. Four. No, it says two and four. Never no, it's two and four. Yeah, because it's just Which, a Sport S. I mean, with basically, stickers. with like, it's a Sport S with stickers and rock rails and like the good transfer case, or I guess. I, I, I felt bad for the product planners because <clears> I was fairly certain they didn't expect the principal chief at the Cherokee Nation to come out and say, hey, do you guys mind not using the name anymore? Yeah. And then they were like, here's another it's indigenous like, people. It's a little odd, and I don't know if it's coincidence or if it's just the way the news broke, but all of the news about the FCA stuff came out at the same time. Like they released the Islander within hours of the Cherokee news, within hours of the upcoming Grand Wagoneer news. So it's, uh, well, and I mean, we, we, we could speculate all you want, you know? You need to use the new company name Stellantis. I'm sorry. Uh, no further like the, comment <laughs> the, per- the prescription drug drugs have been made before yep. it still sounds like a pharmaceutical yep. company it will not help your jeeps <laughs> can't even uh, say it oh it's so bad um i anyways yeah sorry that's the only actual <laughs> like it. new off-road news that exists in the world um my my news is i am ready to get the hell out of my house i want to get yeah. I need a king. And to be honest, the last two days here have been in the upper sixties and uh, it, it has been a struggle to like not sit outside all day. Upper sixties. What is yeah. that like? Uh, <laughs> I, I should have double checked what Levi's been dealing with, but. Oh, oh it's been beautiful here it's, the past couple of days. Oh, yeah. Like glorious after day. our polar oh, vortex. Oh, yeah. You guys yep. got killed. <laughs> that that was ridiculous so in in casey levi i think i said this on the last show we went from having like negative i think it was like negative 14 or negative 13 to within a week's time the next monday was in like the mid 60s it was like a 70 degree swing it, which, and that is just kansas for you yeah i was like still. we've had that before but at oh, least but at least you're in the part of the state where you can actually discuss like the kansas heat being in Kansas City, I have people all the time that I want to talk to me about, man, this Missouri heat. I was like, you know where we work right now, right? Like, you're on the other <laughs> side of the state line. Can you just say Midwest? Like, Yeah, right. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's literally like drive 10 minutes. It's the same. It's like two degrees different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're more of a uh, dry heat out here. <laughs> yeah. Not dry not heat. much humidity. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have trees. The we shirt. don't have mm-hmm. – uh, it is very depressing. I love it. Do they start to count the windmills as trees? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> only if only if the cell towers are also painted to look like trees. So did I talk about the ugliest cell tower I saw in Utah? This is forever ago, Ross. Like we've recorded so many shows since then. There was 
we were in Southern Utah driving across 70 and I was like, what is that on that hill over there? And it looked like a, someone had built a fake tree. Like, oh, yeah. And not like the one where it's like a long skinny pole and then they do just the fake tree bits to cover the cell tower bits. They yeah, started at the bottom wide and like brought it up narrow. <laughs> Like they thought it was a Christmas tree. Yeah, but it was like the world's ugliest straight line Christmas tree ever. And as we drove by it, that's exactly what it was. It was a fake cell tower or a real cell tower dressed up as a fake pine tree. It was crazy dumb. Uh, Some efforts better than no effort. Yeah. Are you okay if I I I share your map? Yeah. Because I feel like Levi's been on enough road trips that he's going to be like, "Mm -mm." (laughs) probably. He's going to be like, you're a fucking idiot. Is is this a, is this a future trip here? This it is, is a. Ross is actively it's, planning it's, this. <laughs> not actively. It's like, it's an the, idealistic trip. The amount of conversation we had today that was active planning. Yeah. It's, it's a trip that I could do. So the the premise is I'm, uh, without revealing too much, I'm going to have a little bit of time off before uh, another thing starts that after it, something it's a ends. Very good very good scenario yes. for both. Yes. Yes, it's a good scenario. Um and I'm going to have some time off. So I've always wanted to do a cross country or, you know, round the country road trip and this kind of affords the opportunity. Um it's a lot of driving and <laughs> <laughs> I have two vehicles neither of which are currently very perfectly suited to this drive, so that's kind of up in the air too. Well, the Miata is, you know, you have a, a third Miata perfect vehicle that's limited on mileage, which is why I, you can't use it. If I put this mileage on my wife's car, A, she would hate me, and B, it would we would exceed the mileage for like next year or two. So <laughs> it's a lease. I, you know, I can't fuck with that. Um, so, you know, so the Miatas would be fine for this trip. And obviously it would be a lot of fun, but the Forerunner is probably the better option. I ordered some parts for the Forerunner today, thinking that hopefully I can get it sorted out in time to potentially do this trip. But you know, it, everything changes by the day here, so so we'll see. I mean, for the listeners, I, I, it's like uh, probably by the time I get home, uh, uh, is that a five seven two seven or six seven two seven? I think that's a six I seven two it. seven. On it's here. like a, it's yeah, we're gonna call it a sixty five hundred mile trip from. Yep. Connecticut to Denver uh, via KC. Yeah, it's a six. Yeah. And then out to Monument Valley, down through Arizona, potentially, I guess, through Texas. There's no real good way to get from Arizona to Florida, unfortunately, uh, other than fly. And <laughs> you can't do a road trip and fly. So, yeah, this is a... Uh... So if you take the Forerunner, mm-hmm. is there any off-road parks that you could actually go visit? Because I feel like having a more capable mm-hmm. vehicle than a Miata would be a lot of fun. Cause right. there's like, I'm looking here going like, okay, like Indiana, you have Badlands off-road park, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. There's another off-road park in there. Mm-hmm. Looks like you're kind of going through bunch Moab. Of Pennsylvania. Yeah. So the ideal thing to do would be run some of the trails out West, like the Utah stuff, the Arizona stuff, the forerunners perfectly capable to run, you know, basic trails. Uh, greens are like probably up to, threes or light fours but you know it's there's no skids uh it's on suspension that i will to fill you in on this i actually bought the truck from chris so (laughs) there's a good is you can tell me has the suspension ever been touched because it it looks original so it is (laughs) so it's the original suspension on a truck that will hit two hundred and seventy thousand miles tomorrow so woo it's uh it's a toyota fine but the suspension's not the happiest of campers. So, it, you know, it, I could probably do some basic level stuff, which realistically I wouldn't want to push it too much on a trip like this anyways. Um, but, you know, the transfer case is leaking a little bit. Not terrible, but it does have a little bit of a leak. Um, We're going to have to get you the sticker for uh, Remember Stupid. You have to drive this to the next state. Seriously. Yes. <laughs> I was just thinking the exact same thing. So, yeah. I mean, if I took the Forerunner, I'd certainly, like, hit as much dirt as I could <clears throat> maybe not in the first stretch because like the Pennsylvania stretch is where I go off-roading primarily uh, but then out in you know Utah I'd do as much as I could um, so yeah we'll see so much feels have, like it's changing go ahead 
have you guys ever seen or been out to uh, Sand Hollow, out to St. George, Utah? Sand Hollow? No. I yeah, is that no. a park or? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a state park there. <clears throat> it's in St. George, Utah, or by, or by Hurricane um utah it is i've always said this if if i were to move any place in the united states it'd be there oh that looks beautiful oh it is it, it is bucket list if you guys have never been go i highly <laughs> like highly highly encourage it i mean they're they're like so ohv friendly out there it's got there's a big lake there's sand dunes there's like rocks like moab um you're right next to a big city so like if you want to just take a break and like go out to eat and mm -hmm. stuff um they're they're super proactive on like not closing down with covid and it's just like an awesome place to go wheel camp and just okay. have fun it looks like lake powell from those pictures at least There's water and red rocks are definitely going to look similar thanks yes they they tend to <laughs> <laughs> they do tend to this so this is not it's a little Go. further west than that route had planned, yes. but I am going to put it on my, you know, theoretical, like, list here. So, so if it's but, but near St. George. Show the rocks. The rocks? Oh. Yeah, like type in Sand Hollow State Park rock crawling or something. I mean, who knows? Yeah, that's, I really want to do, like, four low on the slick rock. That's really what I'm trying to get at. It, it's amazing. What's cool about, like, you, you, you see the lake and stuff, you can drive your vehicles into the lake. Like there's no or restrictions what? as far as that goes. Yeah. Like if you want to like drive your vehicle into the lake and like hang out and splash your like feet in the water and whatever. I mean, it's uh, like, dude, th this is like heavy, heavy waterfall rock crawling. Holy shit. What just happened? It is, no, there's a lot of cool, easy trails. Um, don't look at the chick in the bikini. Don't, don't look I don't know. I'm looking at TJ's on their side and on their roof and on their back. Ross, it's just oh dunes. There's, there's a lot of rollovers. But but you don't <laughs> have to. That's what I'm saying. Like, you don't have to. Like, it has a little bit of everything. But I'm not meaning to sidetrack this, but it is just, man, if, if I highly, like, encourage, like, mm -hmm. going out of the way and going to check that out. Like, it is very cool. Noted. Thank you for the recommendation. I will do everything I can to get there and probably I, I, spend the majority of the weekend watching videos. That look, <laughs> I mean, what's in front of us here looks like you could do that for sure. That looks okay. As long as oh, you there's... pick the correct line. All those guys are buggies, but it's okay. <laughs> Everybody has their fenders cut off, but yeah, it's well, there are no fenders. <laughs> there's no, there are literally no fenders in that picture. <laughs> That's funny. I like it a lot. Same. I, I cool. think that'd be a good spot. <sighs> so, so that's your giant trip. Essentially. How, Ross, what's your, your longest road trip? That I've ever driven? Yeah. My brother and I did Chicago to New York when I bought the Corvette. Okay. And so that that's was, like... I mean, it was also a business trip, so we had to stop and like visit customers. Okay. Uh, but it was it wasn't terrible it was like it's like 12 hours two half days of driving yeah. yeah it's like 12 hours right i mean it's also taken me like nine hours to get to maryland in traffic <laughs> you know like right <laughs> travel time and actual like how much time you should be on the road are not doing the same like here nine hours for me puts me in denver easily that's even if i run into traffic it's still I'm easily into denver <laughs> god damn you're driving to maryland that's like two states away it's also taken me like three and a half hours to do the same drive. <laughs> so it's crazy. It's I'm just, I'm trying to imagine your timeline on this trip. Uh, like between you and me, I think you stop in Ohio. I think so too. And then, and then me to Denver. You to Denver is a straight shot. Probably spend three or four days in Denver. Okay. And down to Arizona for probably two days or so. I would say then, that the Denver to Mesa, there needs to be a stop in between there because you're going to kick yourself yeah, if you yeah. drive past all that amazing stuff and don't take any time. I mean, Monument Valley is on the list. That's like the number one place for me to visit in my life. So it would at least be, you know, a night or a day there. And, and then, that state road south from Moab <laughs> is, it's decent. Like it's not a yeah. terrible road. No, it, it, it seems very pretty, you know. And then Mesa to 
Florida. I mean, I have nothing to do between the two. So just stop the fewest times possible. And then ideally, so I, Sam would be flying and meeting me in Florida. And then we'd kind of be doing the Florida thing down to the keys. And then it would probably be about, you know, she has like 10 days. So we'd do Orlando, then down to the keys, then drive up and stop in like Savannah. So. So you're going to be on the road for a while. <laughs> it's going to be so much planning. <laughs> I've never done anything like this. You know, I've never taken off more than like yeah, but five like, days in a row. I've been working for like nine years. <laughs> at least with you in the forerunner, like, and this is not a slight on you, is that you're the right size that if you wanted to lay down the mm-hmm. rear seat and sleep in the back of it, you absolutely oh my God. could. I could, uh, yeah, I could. I could nap in the driver's seat if I need to. Like, right. But like, <laughs> works of being five nine, I can sleep anywhere. <laughs> right. And once you're west of Denver, like, that's socially acceptable all of a sudden. Like, <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The Miata, not so much. Right. Like, I, I, I just like, it's so intensive to drive it like more than an hour. <laughs> I, yeah. I hope so, you get everything done we'll with the Forerunner that you Let's need talk to about get something done. else. <laughs> <laughs> I like planning this stuff. You know that. <laughs> Because everything to me is a long drive. <laughs> the nice thing about the interstate speeds is getting out to Dodge is way faster than it used to be. Did I speed limit? Uh, yeah, briefly. Yeah, we we uh, Kansas is now seventy five on the interstate instead of seventy like it used to be. Ooh, that's fun. So, AKA which is- ninety five. <laughs> Maybe if you know the cops with my. Uh, East side of the state tags. I don't flirt with that too much. I don't think Connecticut's <laughs> going to go over too well either. <laughs> no, Connecticut is not going to go over too well. <laughs> I'll just, uh, I'll just like print out a fake Kansas tag. No, Which don't. Is, I will not do that. Don't. <laughs> nobody ever do that. <laughs> Allegedly, if I mailed you the old Land Cruiser tag because I got it back from California. <laughs> oh, the punishment for that would be so arrested. Yes, it would. It would not go well. I and don't we, condone we, any of this. We know from every gumball rally that has run through the state of Kansas that cops aren't really friendly Hi, with Sam. High speed. I'm in Kansas State Prison. I need you to come bail me out. Fast. In the west part of the state, you're not going to Kansas State Prison. They have to send you somewhere else. Call me. We know a guy that knows a guy. You'll be fine. Deal. Hopefully it doesn't come to that, but deal. I'll, I'll shoot you Levi's yeah. number later. Yeah. <laughs> but, but seriously, invest in a good radar detector. I, I have a V1. I, Dude, I yeah so you have a good it, it comes in very handy in Kansas because it is there's no hills mm-hmm. and you can like see the guy radaring you for like a good day like a mile out yeah <laughs> okay noted I'm I have because it's true <laughs> I haven't used the v1 since I owned a car that was fast and that's been a little while now so I'm that's break the it back I out was, the reason I'm I'm rooting for the Forerunner is that V8 at interstate speeds is a lot oh, of yeah. fun. It's 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 pretty. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk anyway. about Levi because he's got way more fun stuff on his Instagram he that I want to share. Really does. <laughs> uh, Levi, do you want to give us like a elevator pitch? <laughs> like, who are you? What do you do? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I yeah, I race uh, Ultra Four. <laughs> um been racing ultra four for about shoot 10 plus years now wow that's um, like crap from fairly early on yeah um kind of a fun story that kind of goes with that which it's okay now um is <laughs> the, the first the first time that i okay, raced now. king of the hammers <laughs> i uh i raced it with a uh fake id really uh, what <laughs> yep <laughs> yep like a fake like racing license just just uh so i was in high school right and i was happening to taking photoshop um oh and so God. i uh <laughs> i i uploaded my id and uh changed it just changed the one number so you had to be 18 in order to race king of the hammers well i was 17 at that time uh for the very first time so i just changed i was turning 18 in may but the race was in february so i changed Mm -hmm. the the two to a five and sent it in and got my dad's signature and uh 
went and raced and that's that's what uh i was 18 my birthday was dad, on february 11th did he notice the change or did he just not even look no 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 my dad was all about it my dad was <laughs> like, he he was uh, he was all about it yeah no he 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 might have helped a little bit in that whole because he thought because i had already been racing for two or three years uh, mm. on a lot smaller series and like so he knew i was okay uh, mm. you know enough to be out there and trusted and whatever um but it was just a stupid rule right um mm. so yeah we made a fake id and i uh that's raced so cameras for the first time <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> probably one of the few that's ever done that that's great yeah well dude now they've opened it up to where like there's way young kids racing um so but that was in the days like with king of the hammers it was like before it got big right um it was kind of in its uh i don't know what it was in infant stages yeah at that point so they had some pretty strict rules in that just for insurance reasons was it makes sense isn't king of the hammers like the like the original group is known as like the dirty dozen or something but there's actually like 13 of them the the baker's doesn't no it was uh it was uh it's they call og 13 that's what it is okay and it was like there it's called the og 13 but there's only 12 or something oh my god it's yeah yeah i i don't follow i don't like i just need to get my truck and go fast (laughs) yeah (laughs) i i guess we're not good at counting we're racers yeah that was I can't remember. I watched, I think it was like a documentary or something by the series of like how it all started. And that was the one story that it stuck with me out of it. Not good at counting more racers. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what place are you in? I got no fucking idea. <laughs> Not last. Well, Not last. They said it was like at one time, like those original people will always have a spot at King of the Hammers because you have to qualify it in order to race King of the Hammers. So mm-hmm. those people that race will always have a spot in KOH. So, which is kind of cool. But that's that's really yeah. rad, actually. Like qualifying stressful. <laughs> yeah. Qualify. Tra- travel across the country and you qualify like by racing other races too. But yeah. So, what got you into it? Did you just grow up in the off-road racing world? Did your dad introduce you to it, or was it something that you kind of veered off and found yourself? No, yeah. So we're always been super big off-roaders. So my dad had like crazy, like little buggy things before buggies were really a thing, like in the '90s, to like uh, XJs and CJ5s and stuff, and so like. Off-roading has always been like part of the family deal. Like we'd go to Colorado every year and camp and hang out. And, uh, but we were also like super passionate about racing. Like we have circle track stuff around here. Um, and kind of the whole evolution of like the mid two thousands kind of spawned this off-road racing, like with like rock crawlers and Jeeps, Mm. you know, and giving them a place to race and into what it is now. Uh, my dad started racing, uh, off-road stuff in 2007 and then I quickly followed in like 08 or 09 with him because it was just a good thing to to kind of do as a family so right. and then here I am today I want to say it's honest but it's motorsport so we all know it's not honest yeah <laughs> dude okay yes but like one thing if you guys ever come to ultra four race it is I mean, there's cheating. Of course, there's cheating. It's but... motorsport. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Seriously. But what's so cool about Ultra 4, at least in like my class, the unlimited class, it is it is 100% unlimited. Um, minus you can't have these things called tire balls inside of your tires. Um, to weigh the bottoms down? No, it... no. Then... So, so if you picture a tire, right, there is um, – essentially there's 20 like individual uh inner tubes inside of this tire so you can get a sidewall puncture and it falls down to that the inner tube that's inside of the tire and then keep on running Mm -hmm. so we ran those for a lot of years until they banned it due to Mm -hmm. safety reasons all right so i have an image does that seem yep that's it right there yep (laughs) the actual fuck is that oh my god I mean, it's an accurate name. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Tire balls, man. Yep. 
So, so this is designed that if you get a puncture, the entire tire doesn't go down, just the individual ball. Exactly. Exactly. And, and most of the time, those balls are pretty protected to where like mm. you're going to, you're going to shove a rock through the sidewall and it's not going to get those per se, but okay. uh, you're going to keep on being able to run just fine. Um, it's like run flats for off road. <laughs> yeah, it, exactly. They're really cool. Um, they're not cheap. They're about 500 bucks a tire. So yeah. Um, and they are the worst thing ever to install. I was going to say how, like, what is the price? Do you have to inflate them each individually and then inflate the tire, then mountain balance? And- not, no. not everybody looks like they go for the expensive ones. I, I like the, the Jesus one or whatever that guy the is. The Jesus, there's a couple <laughs> of tigers in there. Like, but that's, that's a motocross bike. That's, mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a much smaller ball. <laughs> but but it, it, they're terrible, man. So you have to like literally <laughs> – you guys are going to laugh at this. Um, so you get these balls, and they look like um, pillows, essentially, like little mini throw pillows. And they have like your little basketball, football style, like little little inflation nipple deal, mabob, and whatever. Um, the thing I can uh, never find when my kid needs to go play something exactly exactly um and uh you have to like lube them up right you you have to legit they sell you like the guy will straight up tell you it is like ky jelly you have to lube these (laughs) things up with because they create a lot of friction inside of the tire you know they get so hot you gotta you gotta have some sort of lubrication to keep them uh cool and um so you put them in the tire and then you have a I want to say there's 20 of them per tire. Yep. Yeah. Like that's a small. Those are a little creepy. Those look like somebody kind of drew faces on them or something. It's like a side by side. Yep. And then you got to use this like uh, GBC inflator that you have to inflate them all at the same time, all evenly. Oh. Yeah. And so they all blow up individually uh, or sorry. I mean, at the same time, at the same rate with the same pressure or else you'll get them shifting around weird. Um, and then once you have that, that in, you got to pop all like those little needles out and then you got to literally press the wheel into the tire and put your beadlock ring on. <laughs> and it's like a crazy amount of force to actually, uh, actually press them together. Like you, I have a big forklift and it struggles pressing those together. <laughs> like so you, it is. Do you have these and things that aren't racing? Like just your weekend stuff? Heck no. They're way okay. too much work for that. Okay. Yeah. And like they added like that was horrible. pounds per tire. Oh my God. Oh God. So I mean, good for they, the front end. <laughs> Bad for the back. Yeah. They would never balance going down the road. The, they're, they're very popular in the military applications. So like a good. lot of like the military stuff runs them. Um, a lot of uh, like dirt the bikers armor run upsellers. Them. Yeah, exactly. So big company there it's, it's really cool technology like it is cool it's just we can't run it uh anymore so interesting very interesting i learned something today yeah, yeah. i learned a lot today <laughs> heck, heck, heck yeah <laughs> but yeah our, our class is unlimited we don't have any rules at all so oh. you can run whatever size motor whatever size i mean tires whatever mm-hmm. size I mean, whatever length, width, front engine, rear engine, IFS, solid axle, whatever. I mean, you can't run like a helicopter or anything like that, but um, kind of feeds the purpose. But uh, <laughs> you yeah, might. you can run whatever. There you uh, go, Russ. Like this, a, oh, this, my God. This is the heartbeat. Oh. LSX. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Oh. Is that a crate motor or is that like who built it? So it started life out as a crate motor. Um, and then from there, it's kind of evolved a little bit. Like every year, it's like if we if we see a void or see a way to increase horsepower, obviously, or reliability, we upgrade it. So for the most part, it is a crate motor. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like the first year I got it, I ran it as a straight crate motor. The second year, we put heads on it. The third year, we put a cam in it. The fourth year, and so like it's just Christ. kind of evolved. Um into what it is today but so, for the most part runs on pump gas and well i mean it's a so it started as a 454 what kind of numbers are you seeing okay so so this one's Allegedly. like super 
super <laughs> mild. Um, on the dyno, it's super depressing. You don't you don't put a on a chassis dyno. It's depressing. Um, like I think we see like three four hundred horse on the chassis dyno. Like and it's just a BS number. Like it doesn't matter. It's but, arbitrary. Yeah. Yeah, but that that one um, it is just shy of seven hundred horse at the crank. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> And it's a small. Oh my one. god, it, uh, it's a small one, man. Everything's true. relative. <laughs> no, it is true. It's compared to the guys I run with. It is a super mild motor. Oh my god, we stumbled upon. Uh, I can't remember. It was. It was a, a, like right after they stopped making the K5 Blazer, they started making that two door Blazer. You know the fixed roof one. It eventually turned into the two door Tahoe. Remember that in like the early 1990s. There's a guy wow. locally selling one like with a with a UConn board and GT. yes, the same thing. But there's somebody locally selling one with a board and stroke six oh two. What? Uh huh. That's what I said. So seven hundred's healthy. And what kind? Of, like generally, what's the weight of the race trucks you're putting it in? Uh, so they're not light. Um, there's a big difference because, like, I kind of. So I kind of like describe ultra four cars as like the Swiss army knife. And you're going to see where I'm going with this in a second. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there, there is a uh, sledgehammer that's called the plaque line at sledgehammer uh, at King of the hammers. Um, but, but these, these cars are essentially Swiss army knives. So we can do everything. We can do rock crawling. We can go mm-hmm. short course racing. We can go desert racing. We can kind of go do whatever. So the car changes trim from race to race to race. So like, king of the hammers it'll it'll weigh like five thousand pounds and then we'll go to a short course race per se and it'll weigh 4500 pounds okay so within a reasonable amount yeah yeah, yeah. yep yep hmm. that's why do you change i mean obviously you change settings and such but do you like literally swap suspension components for each race or is it just kind of dialing things in for fast or slow um no we we change suspension components around just a little bit um for the most part it's just spring rates and valving and shocks well shit well i mean i guess good parts are good parts (laughs) yeah absolutely absolutely well i mean again these cars got to do everything (laughs) i love so looking i love that you call it a car (laughs) that's clearly not wrong (laughs) it is a car i don't know what do you what would you call it i no, i don't just they're not trucks like it's it's a car like it's they're just yeah, like really well bit built crazy cars it, what what are you daily if that's what you play with what what's your daily i mean i don't mean to show off but it's a it's a 1999 um chevy or it's actually a gmc uh sierra standard cab short bed with a 4.3 <laughs> liter oh heavy v6 right yeah, V6. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't, those 4300s I don't like are like not bad engines. Wait, you yeah. said 1999 Chevy, a GMC, but same. Oh, G- Dude, is it blue? No, it's black. Oh, I, it's I had the same truck. Drive. <laughs> Mine was, was a 97, uh, but yeah, <laughs> those 4300s are like I, they put them in everything, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you can supercharge them and make like way more power than they have any right to just saying <laughs> not that anybody would ever want to do that yeah well it, it'll mine this one will get an ls someday someday but i when i got that, other when the race motor gets retired yeah right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that engine in that truck would be like i mean they, those things are relatively light and those 700s still look good well i that's yeah, that's exactly that right there. Oh, that's, that's an 800. Not, yeah. Why was I thinking it was a 700? It's like because square body. 97 is oh. what I had. <laughs> the, the 99 is the first year for that body style. So yeah. mine's actually a two-wheel drive. Um, oh. But yeah, it's just my daily. It, it's, <laughs> Chris is just, oh. Stupid Cooper <laughs> skills. I know. Uh, I, I, uh, my wife drives a nice pickup. She, she, my wife drives a Raptor. So I, I let her drive that <laughs> and she... Uh, she She's got to haul the kiddo around, man. Nope. Okay, that's, I completely that's, understand that. A little one. safer, a yeah. little bit, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we live out here, like outside of town, like essentially uh, on a quote unquote farm, and uh, it's uh, yeah, 
it, it's pretty pretty safe out here. Mm -hmm. How okay, so if that's your daily, where's the Jeepster come from? Mm -hmm. Um, like what like wh where what do we do with it? Let, I mean, well, it, no, like I, I have a pretty good idea what you do with it. I just it's more pictures, <laughs> uh yeah. I love it. <laughs> Jeep Jeepsters on my uh, potential list in the future. Yeah, like it goes, it goes like like I drive the ninety nine, so I can drive this. If that makes any sense, like <laughs> no, I drive the the fifteen hundred dollar pickup, so I can drive this. Um, so yeah, so the Jeepster, I mean, it's just a super rad creation uh, between tri by tribe four by four down in Dallas, or I guess Fort Worth. Uh, you get in trouble if you call it Dallas, Texas. Um, Fort Worth, sucks. yes. Uh, Texas and just yeah, it's it's a pretty cool ride. It's fantastic. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, well, thank you for kicking off my Jeepster deep dive for the rest of the <laughs> the month. They're so uh, good, Ross. If like, you need to find me, I'll be on Craigslist for the uh, the whole country trying to find <laughs> one. Oh, Hold that's on. so cool. Has this truck, what, this looks like a truck that's been on like Ultimate Adventure. Was that you or am I just mixing up two Jeepsters because I see them no, so infrequently? No, probably, probably mixing up two Jeepsters. Okay. Now, we've never done uh, Ultimate Adventure. Um, Jeepsters are so ugly, they're cool. Like right? they're just, they're just the, the ugly I duckling. That. Yeah, I see that. I mean, they're, they're just, you don't see them. So they're so they're cool, but they're they're kind of coming back into popularity more or less. The 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 one that I found literally because the internet's dumb and you can find anything was this guy's Instagram account is it's Jeepster underscore days, and it's just again old ass Jeepster with a rooftop tent like, and he mm -hmm. his wife and his daughter were just tooling around Alaska for a long time, but they're from Hawaii, so they oh were God, shipping so they it back and thing? forth. Yeah. It's got to be like three thousand dollars just to ship it. I'm not quite I, sure. I what follow it is. that guy. Do you? <laughs> I, I yeah, do absolutely. Is yeah. it one of like the six people on Instagram with Jeepsters? <laughs> <laughs> hey, before everybody had not sprinters, on it. <laughs> somebody else had to have a hipster traveling That's vehicle. True. Jeepsters are pretty. That's true. Well, but the, it's it's a, it's very cool. But it is nothing like like a modern Jeep or Forerunner or anything yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. It's just like it's loud it, it's yeah. it's not like what you think it would be and, and you like they're so narrow like you're sitting there rubbing shoulders with the guy next to you you know <laughs> and it's just like not we we did this thing called expedition colorado uh okay. with it we went from um it was a deal with uh amsoil and uh mm -hmm. my buddy brad level out in colorado but we went from uh moab utah to Colorado Springs all off road. It was like 700 miles. Oh, oh my God. How many days? It was five days. Okay. So at least that's a, that's not a terrible amount of mileage each day. Dude, but we hit it hard. Like we hit it like sun up to sundown every single day and just oh, like shit. That's days, exhausting. days where you just didn't you just did not want to go any further you're just like i just want to relax this is supposed mm -hmm. to be vacation and it just <laughs> it wasn't it, it was god damn yep and my dad and i did it and uh that's so amazing holy shit and you can see everything in the windows is jam-packed full of just <laughs> stuff <laughs> it, 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 we're, we're going back to how narrow this thing is and just how there's no room for anything in it so we're carrying five days worth of stuff you know all of our camping gear and like all of like the the food the cooler the we had an airby cooler in there as well like a fridge i mean um how do the shock towers in the back come into the cab Yep. Yep. They come, they come through the fender wells into the cab. Holy there. shit. <laughs> yeah. They, they weren't really uh planning a suspension to get to the point that it's at. No. Uh, it looks like that thing needs to squat there. <laughs> so that thing was so overloaded. Oh my God. That thing was terrible. Like every bump we hit, but we were doing it with a, um, a Jeep Willys. Okay. So, so like, here we are with this like V8, you know jeepster and we're doing it with a box like our buddy has a box stock 1940 whatever a military jeep willies with a stock four cylinder stock wheels stock tires and he's like we got to keep up with them so we're not going fast right right 
Texas. So it uh, it was is a long the, couple of days. Is that the Hurricane engine, the four cylinder? I think it is. Uh, in the Willys. Yeah. It, it was a vapor locking SOB. That's all I know. <laughs> Sounds right. It's the hurricane. Then. What <laughs> makes yeah. you say that? <laughs> yeah. Jeep, yeah. Jeep had awesome engines names then. Cause the hurricanes based on the go devil. Like yeah. I love old Jeep engine names. <laughs> oh man. That's so cool. We well, said I mean, it was but like forties. It might not have been the hurricane then. It might've been a go. So, if we go to, if we go see Brad level, on instagram brad he, 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 yep brad level he's uh he raced ultra four as well and also runs a desert truck is he related to jim level no <laughs> i have to i don't know astronauts are cool. <laughs> jim uh, okay you, you he played with broncos oh dude he's like the creator of the bronco like he not not the creator of the Bronco. He has had like a huge helping hand in the Bronco mm. development. The, the Bronco new R, it looks like. Man, his mm-hmm. dude, he's got a classic Bronco with AMS oil down the side. Like this thing's amazing. Oh, yeah. All right. It, well, if I cool. were to recommend anybody cool. to be on the show, um, <laughs> if I ever had that power, I would recommend Brad Level. That guy noted. He's he's an amazing guy. I, I could sit there and listen to him all day. Uh, yeah, I and like he's old. in Colorado Springs. Oh. So That's a garage. One one of my reasons for starting the podcast, Levi, is to get myself embedded so I get to go to these events and not have to just be the fan in the stands, but actually know people. <laughs> well, Looking that's for awesome. Access. <laughs> It, it sounds like a much cheaper thing than what I'm doing, man. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> if, I had, I support if you. I had any kind of idea how to do what you're doing, I would much rather do that. Well, I, I would love to have you out at a race, man. Oh, definitely. We'll definitely make that work. Yeah, we're going to take you up on that, just so you know. Here's Brad's willies. Uh, that's, that's good. Yeah. It looks like it's straight out of MASH. It, it is straight up. So he looks so uncomfortable driving that thing. And, <laughs> and he had his two kids with him as well. He, had, oh, he has two sons. Uh, that sounds horrible. Yeah, one sat on like the luggage in the back, and the other sat, you know, <laughs> on the back. And what's funny is like, so the fuel tank's underneath the the driver's seat on those. Well, the year before he did this, he went the opposite way. He went from Colorado Springs to Moab. He had the fuel like gas cap leaking, and so every time he would hit a bump, it would splash at the bottom of a seat. Oh my fuel. god. <laughs> <laughs> and so you could imagine what that does to your butt after uh 700 miles i I love slow motion suspension travel that's got to be like the most terrifying thing what's that what's that why am i wet oh no oh it's, it's, fuel. Fuel. it's, it's gas fuel. <laughs> oh, oh, slow motion suspension travel is great especially in the things is. where everything's got a uh, independent suspension yes well it's just true. it's uh that truck works man uh yeah he's definitely been a part of broncos because his instagram's literally full of camouflage broncos yeah like he's been (laughs) he's been one of the big uh he's had a contract to help for develop this thing so so great which what a gig which means it hopefully it'll be really good yeah right somebody that gives that much of a fuck about it is actually involved in it then there's a good chance it's going to be really really good so, so he has told me one time, so he, um, one day I was having a problem with like the Raptor, just like it was doing some weird stuff, um, on me. And so I texted him, I'm like, what the heck, man? And he was like, ah, that's a safety that Ford builds in. I'm like, why? He was what? like, just remember there, there's a, in a room, you have the engineers and yep. the, um, lawyers mm-hmm. all in the same room together. And probably so, an accountant too. And I mean, and probably an accountant. And so, they and have marketing. things they want to do and then the things that they can't do and yeah. that apparently eliminating that safety feature at that point in time is not something they could do mm. okay hold on Russell. but this is a great still because it's levi's car with every every tire is at a different elevation oh man yep yep look at that the- car goes by the name of loretta oh loretta i love it so much 
That's pretty cool. So have you found yourself cursing Loretta at some point? Uh, I, I talk sweet to her. I talk okay. sweet. We have a very good relationship and I'm going to keep it that way. But yes, I mean, yeah, at times we've, uh, we've had some words. <laughs> is it so? We've had some words. Af- after each race, is it like a full teardown or like, are there certain components that get replaced? Are there certain components that get re- rebuilt? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, everything gets rebuilt um, at some point in time. So, like, I learned a long time ago that you don't try to be the expert at everything. Let the experts be the experts at their job. So, like, let let the transmission guy be the transmission guy and the T-case guy be the T-case guy and mm-hmm. the third guy, you know, and so forth. So, after every race, the car comes back. Um, all the steering gets ripped off of it. It gets shipped to the steering guy um oh, the transmission man. comes out of it it gets shipped to phoenix to the transmission guy the transfer case comes out it goes to wichita kansas the shocks go off it, they get shipped to southern california the drive shafts get pulled off and they get shipped and like and, and and so on so the car gets pretty much disassembled the motor is one thing that we don't really worry about um we take oil samples we send them off we cut open the oil filter um and just make sure that everything's healthy and good in in that side of things but everything else we 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 go over with a fine tooth comb that's so nuts sounds um and it's so much cleaning yeah yeah like so much cleaning this is a time lapse that is going very fast i can't imagine how long it actually takes it it takes about a full day to strip the car down and clean it and at most there's only two people in the video yeah, it's it's me. I'm in the orange shirt, and uh, I have another one of my friends um, that uh, helps me out. But uh, yeah, what it a is freaking process. I'm so... I'm the marketing guy, <laughs> the me- the mechanic, the cleaner. This is making me feel really bad for not washing my quad after our last really muddy ride in. Uh... <laughs> October. <laughs> oh man, it's that's this, wild. For the audio listener, you probably need to find the YouTube link on this show because it's just clips of the car being sideways in the air and coming down and just recovering. Like, I'm assuming part of that's driver skill. I have my eyes closed most of the time. <laughs> Close eyes, floor it. I love that. Yep. Ultra four is completely okay with, with cars hitting each other. Well, well, and they're, they're open tire cars. So it's like not cool because yeah, like we get into it with mm-hmm. each other and it su- always sucks for one person. And it's, it's generally the car that's doing the climbing of the tires, if that makes any sense. So if you smack tires, the, the person always so goes like for a ride. How you get bumped up because your tires climbing over that's more damage to yours yes absolutely yeah absolutely so so but if you say you get your right front into somebody's left rear in front of it and they they hit you step on the brakes or whatever or slow down and they go into a corner a little harder they're going to climb your rear tires and tumble so tumble <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> Like I, I know I've seen the clips. I'm from saying like, that so much. <laughs> with with from King of the Hammers, where it's literally like of buggy climbing over another buggy. Like yeah, yeah, totally legal. Yeah, that's not at speed. Yeah, no, it's totally legal. If, if in matter of fact, like I got drove over uh, this year and screwed up my winch, screwed up a bunch of stuff because my car was high centered um, at this very last rock trail called King's Graveyard. And, and the name is very fitting. And uh, so I'm out winching and there's car, two cars that come up behind me and it's just a stupid spot. It's like you, you're to the end of the race, you're tired. Um, you just did however many hundred miles of just horrible, horrible terrain. And I get high centered and I have to get out and winch. So I'm out pulling winch line, car comes up behind me. I'm super courteous. Like I, I'm a guy that like, I never want to hold up another competitor so I get out and I spot him around me and his left tire climbs up over my hood, breaking my winch, uh, 
my, my, my winch cables, my, uh, my reservoir to my shock, my lights, oh. everything. So, and you're just like, ah, oh, thanks dude. Like, oh man, it sucks so bad, but <laughs> you're, you're part of the race course, man. At that point. That's insane. That is, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing like it. That's the long and the short of it. Yeah, there is absolutely nothing like it. <laughs> like these drops are just so severe. Like that's nose down completely, isn't it? Like, oh yeah. Oh, I love King of the Hammers. <laughs> ever ever since uh, was it? Which show went out there, Ross? Was it Smoking Tire or Big Muscle? No, it was it was Musto. Yeah, it was Muscle, and I and I saw like rocks the size of cantaloupes be thrown past spectators, and I was kind of like, all right, I kind of want to go watch this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's all it took. Yeah, I, I highly and, and for those people that don't really know what King of the Hammers is, um, you, you're probably living under a rock. But pun it intended. is like the great pun intended. Yeah, <laughs> the the craziest off road event you've ever like been to in your life. It's like mm-hmm. kind of been compared to like Burning Man, and but I'd compare it more to like Sturgis, more or less, for like right. off road people. And uh, it's just cool. I mean, it is like literally a, a town that has popped out of nowhere. Um, it's a dry lake bed in the middle of the mm-hmm. desert. And then boom, one week it's 80,000 to 100,000 people out there. Which is Hammertown, right? Which is Hammertown, right. <laughs> MC and Hammer there's... has yet to make an appearance. It's true. <laughs> then it would really be Hammertown. So yep. for, for you, like, I understand like, so King of the Hammers is like Super Bowl. The rest of the Ultra Four series, there's there's two series, right? There's an east and a west. Correct. Yep. And there's actually a north as well. Really? Like the, yeah, like c- the Canadians can run um, as well. Snow series. Snow series. <laughs> snow so series. for you, do you go east? Do you go what? Like, because you're you're kind of almost the exact center of the country. Yeah. No. Like I'm within thirty minutes of being the exact center of the country. Like right. crazy. Could have hung out with the. Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so for, for years and years and years, I have gone East Coast and West Coast just because, I mean, it's, it's, it's a sucky drive to both, but I have the ability to do it. Like if you're from California, you don't go to the East Coast. And if right. you're from the East Coast and we're saying East Coast, okay, it is not really the East Coast. We're in like, tennessee and like yeah, say, indiana like kentucky's and, the first one right like, yeah yeah exactly so I mean, pittsburgh tennessee i didn't even know that was a place yeah yeah it's a cool little uh off-road park there a a o p or something along those lines yeah aop is um, what it says yep aop yep crandon so we talked to um frank d'angelo who i guess runs the champ off-road series uh, and they go to crandon yep yep um Um, and then nationals are in reno yep yep so so this year i'm not actually running any east coast um i'm running primarily west coast okay um and we uh start off king the hammers uh then we're gonna go to moab um in race oh yeah i I love that place so uh (laughs) gonna go to moab uh april 1st so i then when, when oh, that's you race basically it, my birthday. Oh, yeah, that's killing me. When you race at <sighs> Moab, is that like a a short course, or is it like a section of trails that they like close off for it? Mm, it's it's so it's at a it's at an event. Uh, sorry, it's at a place called Area BFE. Okay, if you look it up. Um, it is I want to say south of town, about ten miles, and it's all private land. Mm-hmm. And yep. but it's like super gnarly rocks. Okay. Um, yeah it is. and it's yeah. it's a super hard rock it's a super hard tra- or race trail we're gonna say racetrack um because you never get a break you never get any sections to relax your muscles and we're out there racing for three four hours at a time so fairly technical super uh, technical the pictures are so like <laughs> more than any other show the pictures might tell the story here it's amazing again no fenders yeah, Seriously. that's a red dot buggy. Those things are pretty cool. Those are like super rock crawler 
buggies. That's like a the guy has like forty twos and twenties on that right now. Did it? It looks like it almost is four wheel steer too. It, it is four wheel steer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If it wasn't, it's something to be real broken. <laughs> something, something's way broken. But uh, yeah, so it's super gnarly track. Uh, I love it, and so we'll be out there for EJS. Um, that that's the week of EJS as well. So I'll get to be out there with the uh, Jeepster and uh, get to run some trails as well uh, as well that uh, that week and get to hang out with my fellow Jeep people <laughs> and non Jeep people. I mean, whatever. So, because the buggy, so or the bug, yeah, your Ultra Four buggy, so custom. Like, it doesn't really count as a manufacturer, does it? No, heck no, no. Like, it's obviously Chevy powered, but. After that, you're just kind of like, yeah, it's mine. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it didn't like, I have people ask me all the time, like, what did it start out as? Like, what, what was it? Was it like a Jeep or whatever? It's like a pile of tubing. It started a tube off as a pile of tubing. Like, it's a yep. race yeah. truck. <laughs> yeah. It's a race car. It was never anything. It was, it's purpose built for this. Um, but uh, yeah. And then I have, I have another race car that's uh, a Legends class car that is, uh, um, actually the same way it is same purpose-built race car, but, uh, it races in a lower class than Loretta and it is, is it... actually tagged in Kansas. So really, yeah. <laughs> so it's street legal. Does it have the same livery? Yep. The exact same livery. So yeah, you should be able to go to my Instagram. Yep. Right there. The one okay. second. Of course, Larry took the photo. Yep. Larry Ken. Yeah. So Super good. nice guy. Can't talk highly enough about that guy. Oh, yeah. He's, I don't. I don't think anybody has bad Larry Chen stories. They're always great. Literally nobody. <laughs> That's but first time I got to meet him, and I've been following his work for years. This year, at King of Hammer. So yeah, super, super good guy. Um, so is so yeah. Is, is tire sponsor the best sponsorship? Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it it is. It sure helps. Um. It's been you my know, running very... joke for a little bit that that's all I care about. If we can get a tire sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I mean, any little bit helps. Right. But um, I, I'm pretty fortunate to like say work with Yokohama tire because we are directly developing technology, doing what I'm doing uh, for the road and for the trails and for the Jeeps and for, you know, the Broncos and for, for everything, you know, trickling down. Um so it's pretty cool to kind of work with that and have your input in developing tires that you'll see on the road. Um, because cool. they look at it like if, if we can serve, if those tires can, sur can survive on what you're doing, well, <laughs> they're going to survive on a JK just fine. You know, <laughs> yeah, seriously. That was a, a conversation I had with a coworker today. It was like my, my O4 TJ had stock tires. Like I didn't, I did tons of stuff with that Jeep. Also, I was much younger and didn't really, I knew I had skid plates. So much uh, less mechanical sympathy at yes. that age. Yeah. The 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 remember stupid you have to drive this home. I don't need that sticker. It's like tattooed inside my brain. I can order that right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So just just to wrap up, Levi, where can people find you? Uh you can find me at, at Levi Shirley on Instagram. Uh Levi Shirley on YouTube. I don't do the whole Twitter thing really. Um blame you. I just don't really get into it, but, uh, yeah, Facebook again, I think it's Levi.p.shirley <laughs> cause yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Because social but, media. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Social media. Yeah. Just type in at Levi Shirley and you should be able to find me somewhere. Right. Uh, wrapping the show up, you can rate and review us on iTunes. I haven't checked lately to see if we got a negative one. I need to, I need to stop referencing it. Yeah, somebody it's will just the yeah, reality. Just a, I really should stop that because it doesn't help us at all. No. <laughs> uh, you can follow what we write on Hooniverse, the real Hooniverse on Instagram, the Hooniverse on Twitter. Uh, I read about the Jeep Islander package. You don't have to go read that article. I basically Ouch. said it out loud. Yeah. But read it. Yeah. Give us uh, the yeah, just click on the website. Help us out. Uh, and then Ross is on Instagram at no, not like the one from Friends. Getting back into it pausing for effect yeah. it's the longest name ever. Yeah. i'm at overlanding dad uh i've been watching levi post stuff for a long time so it was nice to have this conversation tonight <laughs> seriously and i hope we all get to uh 
get together and, and talk about this stuff in person sometime, you know? Hey, I just got moved up in phases. <laughs> I won't say anything. Since I work for a construction company, I now qualify sooner. So um, just anything to get me out. I'm ready. I'm so ready. <laughs> And the state of Connecticut basically told me to go fuck myself. <laughs> but I also had it. So I don't I say you just had it. You have the antibodies. You're good. Uh, Levi, thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Levi. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. Sorry. Enjoy. Sorry to take it weird at the to... end. Yeah. Oh, no, it's all good. It's all good. I wish my video would have worked, man. So you can see me laughing <laughs> over here. We heard you. We heard you laugh. Yep. All right, guys. Yep. We'll tag up soon. Catch you later. See you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, Levi.